Right, let's discuss uh, this matter further. We're joined now by legal expert Ulrich Ru, who uh, shares his views on the latest developments. A very good evening to you, Ulrich, and thank you so much for speaking to us. Let's just first start. You may have heard there the different um, uh, reasons given by the parties on whom they think would be appropriate. Some of the news we're hearing is Mohueng, Mohueng, uh, Chief Justice, former Chief Justice Mohueng, Mohueng, and Justice Chris Jafta are tipped to head the panel uh, to determine uh, whether or not uh, Ramaphosa ought to be impeached. What are your thoughts about this, particularly on whom would be apt for these positions? Well, I think that it is clear that the, the nominations have been uh, of people who have either held or still currently hold high-ranking legal positions in our country. But I think the most important thing about whoever is elected to this panel is that it should be seen as an objective person um, with a good legal background in order to make a determination based on facts and not on on emotions and not on uh, agendas of certain political parties. It must be a finding uh, after a, a thorough investigation is carried out and it must be based on facts. Uh, and I think that if, if um, you know, three, three people appointed to the panel can adhere to those uh, guidelines, then, then it will be a meaningful exercise to determine, you know, whether uh, uh, President Ramaphosa's involvement in, in the entire Pala Pala um, situation uh, has in fact impaired his, his ability to hold the highest seat in our country. I mean, the, the, the fabric of society is at the end of its tether when it comes to uh, corruption in this country. People are very emotive understandably. Now, when I look at the rules, it states that the panel must consist of three fit and proper, competent, experienced and respected South African citizens, which may include a judge, and who collectively possess the necessary legal and other competencies to and experience to perform the preliminary assessment of the motion. Now, as you heard, one of the suggestions there of Bishop Mfumet Dandala, on the basis that he has the requisite ethics and moral standing to lend to this panel. For us as citizens, how should we view, as it's obviously the legal aspect is important, but what about um, other characteristics? Yes, it's a, that's a very valid point that you raise. I think it comes down to credibility. Uh, and it comes down to the fact that if a person was to evaluate uh, the president's involvement and his current situation, you know what credibility does that person hold? Has he or she ever been involved in suspected corrupted activities or ever been convicted of uh, uh, any crimes involving either, you know, a, a dishonest crime or corruption? Um, because if, if he or she has, then obviously a finger will be pointed at that person as well. So you want a person who is seen to be completely objective, who has a high standing in society and uh, who has uh, credibility, a person who can evaluate the facts in the situation and make a credible finding without his uh, credibility being brought into repute. So in other words, uh, it, it will be clear that whatever finding he makes is one based purely on, on the facts and not because he has some ulterior motive uh, or he has involvement with, with some political party or with the president himself, which has uh, you know, led to a biased finding being made. So uh, a very important decision as to who is going to serve this panel because you want uh, at the end Okay, of the I found this on the web for has he or she ever All been right, involved? So, Ura expected that Siri is interrupting you there. But let's talk about um, the fact that if a judge is to be appointed, the speaker must be in consultation with the Chief Justice. Now, the whole aspect of impartiality and objectivity is obviously also a very big point. Share the importance of the consultation with us of the Chief Justice and the Speaker in order to achieve this, because there might be fears, as you know, unfortunately, a current Chief Justice has been dragged into uh, politicized uh, legal issues himself, and there may be some suspicion about his impartiality or the speakers? Yes, well, remember that the Chief Justice holds the highest uh, position in terms of our courts 
in South Africa. He is um, he or she is is regarded as the protector of our constitution, um, being the head of the constitutional court. So the consultation with the chief justice is very important because uh, you know we must make hundred percent certain that whatever findings are made by this panel is in accordance uh, with the constitution and, and is not in contravention of, of any constitutional clauses. And that is why it would be important to, to consult the chief justice as well. Obviously, also for the impartiality and objectivity that the chief justice and the position of the chief justice also brings uh, in consultation with such a panel. Mm. Now, this independent panel of experts in consultation with political parties is to determine any prima facie evidence against President Cyril Ramaphosa. As we speak, is there a veneer of this? I know the question and answer uh, session in Parliament, some say the President got a free pass. Uh, you know, Obviously, there is a need for the president to answer questions, given how long this matter has gone off. But the legal terms, um, is there a veneer of a prima facie case here? Yes, I, I think that um, you know the difficulty with this matter as well is that uh, it is an alleged criminal offence that has taken place. So it's not only uh, his ability um, to be regarded as a fit and proper person to serve as our president. There is also an ongoing police investigation uh, which uh, surrounds this matter. And ultimately, you know, whatever investigation the police conducts, their findings will have to be presented to the NPA, the National Prosecuting Authority, and a decision will have to be made whether, based on the evidence gathered by the police, um, you know, will uh, could lead to a successful prosecution if the NPA does prosecute the matter. And remember that uh, the separation of powers doctrine must always be adhered to. So, and what that means is that the judiciary is separate and objective to parliament, uh, and the parliament is separate and objective to the South African police services, as well as to the National Prosecuting Authority. So those different uh, organs of state cannot influence each other, and, uh, and the findings of the parliamentary committee cannot have a bearing on the police investigation. So ultimately, you know, if a finding is made by this panel, it would merely amount to, to being a recommendation and, and that could then lead to a, a motion uh, of, of against the president uh, mm. seeking that he be removed. I was actually going to ask you about that, how binding that recommendation is going to be. And ultimately, I think for the public who's watching this all play out, um, those who feel betrayed, who feel like there is a loss of confidence in the president and not based on any of those things that you've listed, what will that then depend on when it's uh, pushed back to parliament to vote on a motion of no confidence? Is yes, such a, a vote of uh, or on a motion of no confidence uh, has many phases, and and the phases, you know, run after each other. So this will merely be one of the phases in the process. It will be a recommendation made by a panel, but it is in no way binding on on Parliament, and it is not binding on the South African Police Services, nor is it binding on the National Prosecuting Authority. So, whilst it it would be seen as as being very important. Uh, if it is based on, on, on objective factual evidence that has been gathered, uh, it cannot can never be binding uh, on the president then automatically being removed uh, from, from his position. Uh, it will be used certainly by members of parliament who, who take part in a, in a motion of, of no confidence, um, but it, it, it will never be binding uh, the, the finding of the panel. Ulrich, thank you so much for speaking to us, legal expert Ulrich, who is just sharing his thoughts on this expert panel that will decide in 30 days uh, if they have done their work and there's evidence of constitutional violations, then they will uh, put that forth uh, to uh, Parliament on whether or not the President ought to be impeached and for a vote of no confidence, as you heard him say.